somebody had said I would be crawling around in the f***ing woods doing this shit I would have said you're mad but do you know what? I love it Good morning Viet Yorkshire Good morning Yorkshire Yes, we are Oscar Mike on our way to Sylvie today to take part in some airsoft skate machine and it's bloody freezing. Whoa! Won't prevent safe past this year. Down in the deep dark woods, combat was about to begin. Murder, death. Slaughter of noobs. Welcome to Yorkshire Paintball. <laughs> oh, maybe this road's terrible. So here we are at Yorkshire Paintball Centre, and it's full of these little huts and everything where everybody gets their kit and starts to get ready. Um, there's a real it's a really interesting place to look at the other kit that people have got, the different weapons, the clothing, there are ghillie suits, sniper rifles, MP5s, carbines, and everybody's really open to you just getting up and having a look. Can I have a look at this? Can I have a look at Yeah, of course you can. I will talk about the community surrounding Airsoft as a whole in the group and my experiences a little bit further into the video, but so far as a new player, nothing to worry about. Lots of different people here, lots of weapons and clothing, and if you're into all that military and gun porn, you're going to be in heaven here, that's for sure. And this is the bomb, which is probably going to take part in one of the game modes. You'll flip these up here, flick it, and you'll put a code in, which is quite cool, and you'll probably have to carry it or take it somewhere to explode the bomb. Here on screen you can see a little bit of what's called the castle and it's just a little bit of a look around the site before we actually got in and this is Dave, I call him PMC Dave because he looked like a private military company with his grey jacket on as he, came, as he came in onto the field. He's just giving me a little tour around, you can go in before the game actually starts, um, there's a lot of action that surrounds this place and uh, he's actually telling me how sneaky he was on one game he climbed all the way to the top of here chucking pyros and all sorts off and was up there for quite a long time so there are tactics and places you can go if you're prepared to put the effort in climb all the way to the top of this thing with all your gear on and some of the snipers when they've got the ghillie suits on they will actually come out and almost do a recce of where they can position themselves for some of the objectives that you get to find out at the briefing with the map this is a video is a little bit after we've already got some of the intel on what we're going to be doing but uh, it's nice to have a little look around at some of the things that we would be fighting up this on screen you can see now is a map of the area. It's not a huge place, but it is kind of like two football pitches. And it shows the locations of things and the time at which each objective will move on. So if you want to have a closer look at this sort of thing, please do pause it. I'm not going to leave this on screen for too long. Once you've actually got your kit ready, you're not allowed to bring on magazines or anything that's loaded once you enter into the safe zone. But as I'm out of the safe zone here, every single person has to go on the chrono. This is to make sure that everybody's running legal, everybody's weapon is correct before we actually go out onto the field and start blasting each other. As you can see in the background there, quite a diverse group of kits and clothing. Game on! First objective is... Secure the plane, or defend the plane. You've got two guys going down the middle as well. Of course, with this being a team-based game, communication is everything. And I did initially find that I was calling out a lot of targets, you know, 12 o'clock my position, enemy sniper, so on so on. And there wasn't many people, many other people on the field actually communicating that much. A lot of the guys from patrol base were, they were calling out some of the targets, which, you know, if you're in a small group, you really do need to tell the rest of your small squad where the enemy are so that they can get eyes on, they know where they're in cover and vice versa. 
and on screen now you can actually see that we're actually pinned down because this works both ways as well you can not only can you pin somebody down but you can tell the tell your teammates there's a guy here and vice versa and that's the pure joy of where milsim comes in it's that team based aspect and i just wish there was a way to reinforce that just a little bit more Jesus. <laughs> two quid gone <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> Someone's put a yoghurt pot on a BMX spoke. <laughs> hey! Well, here I am on the backfield. I'm out of ammo, out of supplies, I'm surrounded. You know, some training comes in. I'm literally surrounded all the way around. I can hardly see because I'm in British mag. Oh, I'm sweating like a mother. You want a piece of me? <laughs> Just, you know, don't know what it is, but Chinese eyes. Yeah, look at it. It's good. First shot, unbelievably, was an headshot. Worth all the sweat, all the expense, everything. Popped him right on the forehead. Headshot. <laughs> Getting out of champagne and cartwheels where I got my plums blown off. Anyway, it's time for me to. What's wrong with me? Me. Get out of dodge. Oh, check me alive! Whoa! Shut my own team. Genius. Now what you're about to see on screen is part of the medical system and if you're not quite sure how this works on screen now i'm actually trying to move up from one of my teammates who actually got shot and i'm telling him i'm going to move up and try and get to him as you can see the white armband means that i'm on team white and if i take a hit at any point then i have to shout hit and put my hand up hit Now, if you'll excuse the touch cam, I also have to take this red armband out and hold it up so that the enemy knows that I am incapacitated. The only way for me to get back into the game now is if a friendly touches me or drags me into cover and they'll put that band around my arm. Once the arm is then wrapped, I can then come back in. If I'm shot again, I am dead. Unfortunately for me there, my teammate tried to grab me and he got shot. And if another person doesn't revive me after two minutes, it means I bleed out. And that's how the medical system works. If I get shot again, I have to walk all the way back to the regen and wait two and a half minutes to come back in again. So today there was no dedicated medic role. Every member of the team could bring somebody back in. So what you're about to see on screen is the guy next to me gets blatted full blast on his backpack, which takes him out. And then I am going to grab him and put his red armband around his arm, meaning he's got one life to come back in. Uh, air softers. <laughs> air softers over there, they've had pizza. Oh, get him. Oh, you hit, you hit me. Hit! Once that armband's on, he's free to be the soldier he wants to be. But one more shot and you have to hold up your red band and walk slowly back to the regen centre. And then you can come back in and the battle continues over the next objective. HQ, this is Big Dick calling in J Dam, 100 yards north, northwest over. <laughs> and he falls over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just for the comedy of it. Kit wise I actually had a couple of problems today the magazines were just not feeding up to the hopper and as you can see Dave here from patrol base is just having a look in the field trying to see if we can suss out what's actually wrong with it and this actually happened on both mags so it's a good job that I actually took three M4 mags and I actually had to keep using the windy windy one which is not one I really like but I've been told it may be because I put point threes in these mags so something to be aware of. This video is really only going to be a short snippet into my today's experiences and I will be uploading another video from today's match showing a bit more of the action. So 
what you're probably all going to want to know is so come on then para what does it actually feel like to do the skirmishing is it what you thought it would be and did you enjoy it the initially when i when i got there you start to feel a little bit like if i put this tack vest on am i gonna look like a dickhead do you know that sort of thing but you soon realize that everybody there has their own kit you'll have one guy who's you know he's got the tack vest on he's got the headset he's got everything on it and then there's another guy who's dressed as the 501 airborne nobody ridicules anybody nobody judges anything and i found that was that's really a brilliant thing for a new player coming in so if you want your sam fisher or you want to be this or that you can do it and nobody's going to judge you anyway at all and that also comes down to the weapons as well. Sure, you can go in there and be as gooched up as a Gucci mother Gucci. Or you can go in there, some of them, with just a just a t-shirt, gloves, a pistol, and a rifle. Again, it's entirely up to you, and that comes down as well to the protection, the clothing, the face. It's entirely up to you. If you want to take the risk and get your teeth smashed out or your bust lip, entirely up to you. I got hit a couple of times on the hand, even with gloves on, and it stings a little bit like a leggy band being pulled back, but nothing that was painful. The joy for me is it moulds two things together. I like the military aspect, the weapons, guns, 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 and outdoors. I just love being outdoors. As many of you know, I have a hiking channel here on YouTube, and I love just being in the forest, so... The fact that you can mould these two together is just brilliant. It's It really is something that I'm glad that I've finally got into, and I wish I'd done it many, many years ago. So finally, it's here. On a, If I look at this without jaded glasses on and a bigger picture, for me, I will do some more skirmishing because... Um, it's nice to get to know some of the lads at patrol base and then you start to know people when you go to new venues and things and that's where the camaraderie and the teamwork starts to, starts to come together today i was you know a little bit on the outside forgetting where the respawn centers and where are we next and what's the next objective but that'll come with time for me though it's given me a glimpse of where it could go and i think for me that will be milsim i think that aspect of much 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 larger playing fields so you've actually got the ability to patrol and march out and have some proper tactics with radios and almost a chain of command including vehicles dedicated marksmen dedicated medic etc etc and all these sort of things that come together will fulfill my needs for airsoft and that whole aspect but i certainly will be doing some more videos on skirmishing and airsoft as a whole and i will be documenting my kit the journey the problems that i come into solutions etc and along the way we'll get to meet some of the people who've helped me already it's such a, a a wide amount i know i talk about patrol base a lot but this is really not an advertising board for them it's purely because i've known simon who owns it for 20 odd years i used to work for him and the lads down there, whenever you go down, if there's a problem with your foregrip or your hop-up or this or this, they're always willing to help you. So that really has helped me. If it was just an online experience where I'd bought some weapons and kit, I think I would struggle a little bit. Just to go with the terminology and having to adjust things would be really quite difficult such as changing the spring i wouldn't wouldn't have an idea so to sum it up the community's been very welcoming i've really enjoyed it today i am aching like a morpho i have i'm aching like i have never ached before and i noticed at the beginning of the day everybody was like way gung ho straight out there putting rounds down and running around like a madman and as it gets to dinner time there's a lull as people start to get tired and the energy drinks come out and people go for lunch and come back and then it picks up again at the end but really, really enjoyed it. And I hope you've enjoyed a little bit of this video of showing you some of the things that I've experienced today up at Yorkshire Paintball Centre with part of uh, patrol bases. Well, they all kind of organise it. Uh, I had great fun and um, I really didn't I think. At the end of the day, I used one LiPo battery, which has still got enough juice in it to keep going. And I probably, barring the magazines that were... Uh, unavailable for whatever technical issue i probably went through at least six seven maybe eight magazines uh put plenty down round uh, down range and overall 
a great experience i really enjoyed it so in the next video i may put up the briefing if that's any of interest to anybody and i will put up some more unedited to a degree videos of some of the action on the castle and a few more little bits but overall i've really enjoyed it and i hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to see some more thumbs up subscribe help me grow the channel a little bit more in the meantime i've been paraplay signing off and i shall see you in another video coming real soon bye bye